Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Michaela and I'm here with the third video in the five video series on how I make my graph gans. So please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when the next two videos come up. Alright, so this video is about bobbins, what they are and why you should use them. And what happens when you don't. Um, I don't I've used them before, um, I don't usually use them, and it gets quite messy, the yarn gets tangled, and it's just kind of a headache, but anyway, well, I want to show you guys the right way to be doing things. Um, anyway, so the first thing we need to do, though, is answer a couple of questions that came up in the last video. Um, the first question was, what kind of yarn should you use for a graph gun? Now, I use Red Hard Super Saver for the most part. I've used Craft Smart, I've used, um, okay, I think that's it. I think I've used Craft Smart yarn and I've used, um, Red Hard Super Saver. I may have used Mainstay, but I, I don't know. Um, but basically, I've always used acrylic four-way yarn. Um, so in the last video I listed a bunch of Facebook groups that I'm a part of. They're not my groups but they're but I'm a part of them for graph gans and so one of them was called Teach Me Graph Gan and I went in there and I asked people what they used in their graph gans and these are some of their answers. Alright so I'm going to read you some of the answers that I got. And so one person said, I use Karen one pound. Um, someone else said, I use I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. Another one says, I use whatever I've been able to get in the colors I need. Um, Red Heart. Karen one pound and Red Heart. Bernay Super Value, and someone said they use Big Twist from um, Joann's. So again, it's basically it's basically um, acrylic four-way yarn. Um, another question that I was asked was how much yarn does it take to make a graph gun? Well, it depends on the pattern, the size, a bunch of things. But when you look at a pattern, for the most part, for the most part, it should tell you how much yarn is needed. Um, where's the one I'm doing right now? Here's the one I'm doing right now. Okay, one of the ones I'm doing right now, I've got like a bunch going. I've got four going okay so let me show you what I have going on right now okay so this is the pattern I'm doing right now it's a fox um, this is by my friend Becca I left her email address in the last video um, she does my graphs for me for the most part so it says in her graphs, she lists the colors that are used um, and how many skeins you'll need. So one skein of black, one skein of warm brown, one skein of tur turquoise. So turquoise and aqua, I'm assuming is what that means. Um, one skein or two skeins of orange, one skein of soft white, and four skeins of green, or I'm sorry, white. It says white. Now my graph gan, I am using green as the background per the request of the customer. Um, so I'm using carrot for the body, uh, Aaron, 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 whatever, soft white, basically it's an off white for the, the white parts here. Um, I don't remember the name of the brown, 
Um, it is a leftover skein of yarn that I have that I might be playing yarn chicken with at the end. We'll see. Um, and I'm using tea leaf uh, green for the background and then black. But uh, so it tells you, you know, how many skeins. This pattern does anyway. Let's see what we have here. This is the Harry Potter one I want to do. I think these are all left over from the last time I showed you guys. Um, I can't show you the whole pattern because I did pay for it. But this one tells you the colors if you're using Red Heart. Um, the colors to get, and then it tells you how many yards you need. So you can figure out um, by the label on the on the yarn how many skeins you'll need. So each pattern should tell you the approximate amount. Let's see, one more from another designer. Let's see, does this one tell me? Here's the 49ers one. This is actually a small one. Okay, so yeah, dark gray or black, five ounces, granite, 24 ounces, white, six ounces, and gold, nine ounces. So again, there's different things on the yarn labels. You could do yards, you could do people you know, how many skeins you need, or apparently ounces so um, it tells you uh, what's this one that's from I don't think she told me in this one did she tell me in this one this is a graph colors I don't think she told me in this one but I never asked <laughs> Where's the end of this thing? Oh. Okay, so yeah. I mean... it. This one tells you at the end. One skein, two skeins, three skeins, one skein. So look at the patterns. Um... Now, some of them you can't look at until after you've purchased them, but um, it's really not a lot of yarn. And then, obviously, if you use coupons, it'll make it cheaper. So if you order online, um, Michaels has a coupon to get 20% off. Um, they have coupons for in-store, things like that. So always use coupons when you buy yarn. <laughs> okay. So those are the two questions that I was asked um, regarding the graph GANs that I do. So if you guys have any other questions from the previous two videos or this video or the next, you know, or when we do the next videos, leave them in the comments below and I will answer the questions in the beginning of the next video. And then at the end of the series, I'll probably just do another video if there's any more questions, just a Q&A um, for that. All right, now let's move on to, my camera's shaking, let's move on to bobbins and what they are. Okay, so first I'm going to show you um, the Fox project that I'm working on and what the mess looks like because it's a mess. And then I'll tell you what a bobbin is and then you can maybe see why you might need a bobbin when you see the mess that I have going on right here. Um, so this is what I call my car project because I've been crocheting this during breaks um, and lunch and um, in between uh, buildings. I, I've mentioned this before on the channel. I I own a um, cleaning company. Well, I say cleaning company. I have I have a company. I have a business license and all that, but I'm solo. I'm by myself. So in between jobs, in between houses or buildings. Um, anyway, so that's irrelevant, but, you know. So during my breaks, I crochet. And I've been doing this in my car. And I brought it inside. And it's a mess. So here we go. Oops. 
This is, uh, oh, there's Chloe's Pikachu. This is a mess. <laughs> like, it's a mess. So, as you can see, as you're going along, you keep the yarn attached. At least the way I do it. There is another way to do it where you don't. But I, excuse me, I keep the yarn attached. Anyway, so. And then it leads up to this mess right here. This is, this is a disaster. <laughs> I laugh because it did really is a disaster. So, um, what bobbins are used for is basically to roll your yarn up on something so that it's not in this mess. So let me show you um, some examples of what yarn, yarn bobbins are where you can get them, and then if you don't want to buy them, how to make your own, and then we'll kind of um, clean up this mess in a minute here. Okay, so this is a wooden bobbin set here that I bought. I've shown it before. I got it off of Etsy. Um, this only has five spindles. I did buy two, so I have ten spindles all together. Um, if there are more than 10 color changes on my graph GAN, then I'd have to use something else as well. Um, but this is nice. I like this. But I don't think I'm going to use this for that particular project over there. I might use this if I, have a pro if I ever find a table to where I can permanently keep my stuff and not have to move it around all the time. Um, then I would, you know, use this and... Uh, keep it set up nice. This isn't very good for just storing, you know, doing it and then putting it away in a closet. It, yeah. But here's one option. So the next option, let's go back to my computer here. The next option are these things here. Not, not these, these are um, sewing machine bobbins for thread. But these things, oh, hello, I know my computer, you can touch the screen. What the heck? Okay, let's move the wooden bobbin off my way. All right, this is Amazon. Why can I not move the thing? Okay, don't know what that technical difficulty was. But this, these are yarn bobbins. Yarn bobbins, some kitty floss keeper, but I think you could put yarn on it. So as you see in this picture here, wait, where's the picture? You wind the yarn on it, and it keeps it neat for you. Uh, let's go. Back. And these are relatively cheap. Oops. Um, six ninety six for twenty of them. Seven ninety nine for fifteen of these. There's eighteen ninety nine for a pack of fifteen kittens. Um, these are pretty simple. Just they look like cardboard. I don't know what they're. They are cardboard for ten ninety nine. You get eighty of them. Well, there you go. That's actually pretty good. So here are some options for yarn bobbins. Okay. So this is Amazon. I haven't seen them in Michael's, but I haven't really looked. And I haven't seen them in Joann's, but again, I haven't really looked. Um, they may be there. Um, but they're just, like I said, they're just plastic things you wind the yarn on. The other thing you can do is make balls of yarn and keep them in little balls of yarn. So take a skein of yarn 
and just make, you know, little balls of yarn. Um, and you have to have a new bobbin or new thread for each color change. So I've got like three or four greens on there. Yeah, so you have to... Let's go back over here. It's kind of hard to explain. Well, it's not hard to explain, but let's see. So, you can... Like I said, you can wind all these up into balls. Or, some people, if I've got... Let's see, I've got... One, two, three, four... Five, six places for black. I could have six skeins of yarn sitting here, or three and pull from each end. People have done that. Um, yeah. But the thing that I've done when I have used bobbins is I've made my own from toilet paper rolls. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make one from the toilet paper roll. There's still some toilet paper stuck to this thing. Anyway. Alright. So, what I do oh, is I cut the toilet paper roll. And then, hmm, maybe about yeah, a couple inches wide inch and a half, couple inches. Cut it this way. And then I cut this one. You don't have to cut this one in half. You can actually use this um, as a long bobbin. Um, but I make mine a little smaller. You can make yours as big as you want. Or as long as you want. I make mine small. Or not very small, but small enough. There we go. So there's my bobbin. I'm going to make a little no notch in here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an end on one of these things and I will wind it up. Oh, there's an end because it's still attached to the skein. Let's see. Okay. So I've got this. I swear. The bed is not the place to film a video, but my husband is doing Transformer turn of card game tournament in the other room. So he's talking and yeah. All right. So you got your notch here. So you just put your yarn in the notch like that so it stays and you just wind the yarn on the bobbin. You want the yarn on the bobbin. And now, this is this color here, and it is all wound up. Now, another trick that I have. It's all wound up and it's out of its mess over here. So another trick that I've learned is that now if you leave it like this and then you try to pick all this up, this will fall and unwind and you don't want that. It's a pain in the butt. So what you can do, let's see if I can do this without my camera falling again is you take a paper clip or a bobby pin 
or you can even put another little notch in here. Um, but I just take a paper clip and I just hold it. So that way, if I pick this up to move it, it won't unwind. So let's make another one for this color or this black right here. Now you can make these prior to starting the graph again, obviously, um, and start off with a nice, neat workspace, but uh, obviously I didn't. All right, let me untangle this and I'll be back. Okay, it's untangled. I'm going to grab another piece of cardboard. Put a little notch in it. Grab my thread or my yarn. And again, like I said, you can do this prior to actually starting your graph can. <laughs> um, how many bobbins do you need? Well, I will show you in just a moment. All right, so go on this side. I have another paper clip. Just gonna, like I said, you could probably make another notch too, but paper clip for me. And now that is secure. It's not in this tangled mess over here. And when you're ready to actually crochet this color, you just take the the paper clip off, unwind a little bit, crochet, and then put your paper clip back. Or stick it back in the notch. Like I said, I think a notch would work too, but I use paper when I do do this, like I said, I'll use I use paper clips just to be extra secure. Alrighty, so how do you know how many bobbins you need? Well, when you look at your graph pattern, basically for every color change you do, you need a new bobbin, a new piece of a new piece of yarn. So you see I've got black here, I've got off white here, and then I've got another black here. Now, I'll show you this on the next video, but you can, I need to cut this, you can carry the black underneath here if you want. So you only maybe would need one bob and a black here. But I am doing, every time it changes color, I have a new bobbin. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these together and then I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. And then if there are any questions on bobbins or graph gans that we've covered, anything that we've covered so far, leave it in the comments and the next video I will answer your questions. Okay, so I have rolled up all the pieces of yarn here into bobbins. So it obviously looks like a much neater workspace. They're not going to get tangled up. There's no big old bunch of yarn over there that needs to be untangled every time you try to crochet. And then, so I didn't have a bunch of paper clips, so I did make a notch, a second notch, in the rest of these. So now, if I was to pick this up and move it around, they're not gonna all unwind. So if you have to move this project from one place to another or whatnot, they won't all unwind. So, that is the video on, I mean you do gotta untangle this a little bit sometimes. Sometimes the bobbins get a little tangled, but not as much as if you had just the yarn all like I had it just all over the place. All right, 
it. So if anyone has any questions, leave it in the comments below and I will answer them in the beginning of the next video. Um, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified when the next two videos come up. And we will see you all in the next one. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye-bye.